Hello, Michael here from Small Robot Studio with another Render Man for Houdini tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at how to add motion blur to objects in your scenes in Houdini. I'm using Render Man 23.5 here with uh, Houdini 18.0.597 just for reference. So I've already got a scene set up here and the first thing you're going to want to do is go into your render operator and we're going to need to enable uh, motion blur and this is going to do it at the project level next thing you need to have some animation so I've just got a sphere here that you will see is moving quite quickly from right to left um, in five frames it's moving by 10 units and you can see that I've also got velocity on so you can see it there and what this will give us to begin with is not a great deal so to enable motion blur off a velocity attribute we need to go to our object and then select velocity blur so now what it can do is look at this trail node which i've added here um, if you want to add a trail node you can just add it in tab and typing in trail and getting your trail node and you'll get one of these and you can just set it to compute velocity now you can adjust the velocity scale if you wish um, so we can see the velocity here if i just go back here and you can increase it or decrease it. I'm going to keep it at one for the moment. So what we need to do now is go over to our render man tab, which you won't have on your object by default. So if to add that, you'll have to select your object and go up and add spare parameters. This is this button here on your render man shelf. Then we need to go over to X form time samples and geo time samples under the advanced attributes tab. We'll just change X form time samples to two and geo time samples to one. And you'll probably still be getting nothing, so we may need to increase that by um, geo time samples by one. And then you'll see that we get our result there, but it doesn't quite look right, and I'll show you why. If we have a look here in our camera, our sphere is in the center of the shot, but in this shot, it, is, it appears that the ball is here and the blur is going the opposite direction, so what it should be. So we need to adjust our render operator to have a shutter offset of negative one so the blur goes the opposite direction so now if we render it the blur is going the correct direction we've got our sphere in the center there and the blur is going from um, right to left now we're free to go into our velocity scale in our trail which is just in the object context for the geo and you can increase or decrease that as you wish you will need to update your IPRs though so you can get that to look a little bit longer. Now, as you do this, you may need to go to your object um, parameters here and increase the samples, but for this, it looks fine. So that's for a simple, fairly linear um, transformation. If we do a slightly more complex one where I've just moved the sphere down and then I've added in a new transform, and now we've got our sphere uh, going around in circles. I've got it going really fast because I want to get lots of motion blur so it should be going in a anti-clockwise direction. So if we look at our trail attribute here it kind of looks a little bit wacky and if we run our render you'll see that we're not getting the correct um, direction of our motion blur. So if I go back to the transform and I go to render and I set sampling to no velocity blur you'll see that it's defaulted to what render man is detecting so now we can increase the geo time samples to give a smoother transition between each um, sub frame so now it's basically splitting every frame up into 10 sub sample uh, sub steps and it's computing the blur between each one of those subsets so you get a smooth transition from where it is to where it was now you can obviously also do this at a project level in your render operator as well. Finally, if we look at some particles here and attempt to render those, we are getting motion blur as well. By default, your geo time samples are set to one and uh, two, I believe, for your transform time samples. So when you render that, you'll notice that you don't get any in betweening. So I would suggest always increasing your geo time samples to get a better result. So the most important thing that you should be doing is setting your shutter ops, uh, offset to negative one. So the blur is being emitted from your object backwards. We can also add a trail to our particles and increase the velocity scale so you can uh, vis dev that as well. Just ensuring that you've got it set to compute velocity. 
and also under the render tab you are geometry uh, velocity blur based on the velocity blur and I've just got my transform time sample set to 2 and geo time sample set to 1 and that is the result with the increased trail length and that was the previous result with it just set to 1 That's it for this tutorial. If you found it useful, make sure you leave a like so other people can find it. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe as we're bringing out CG and illustration tutorials every week, just like this one. Become a patron and access tutorial assets, bonus content, a private discord, and more by clicking the link below.